All right, you want to dig into today's framework? Yeah, this is, so it's based on this thread that I did, you know, the the hook, and this is true, as what I tell everyone, it took me four years to write my first book, it took me four months to write my second book, you know, and now I essentially, if you add up all the words I write in a week, I basically write a book a week, essentially. And one of my biggest ahas over the past couple of years is, you ever look at a maze, like if a, if you were to explore through a maze and someone didn't show you the maze from a top-down perspective, it's just you walked right into it, right? And the maze is dark and you got to find your way through and they go, here's a flashlight and you have to find your way to the end, right? That's what writing feels like to most people. They walk into a maze, it's pitch black. They have no idea how big the maze is, where the end is. They have no idea where they're going. It's just a bunch of walls going in a bunch of different directions. And you got to find your way with a flashlight, okay? And that's what makes the process of creating anything, but that's what makes writing so difficult. And the reason that I know this is true, right, is if you, have, if you try and write something, how do people write? They write linearly. Okay, what did we just do? That's three steps forward in a maze. Every single word is a step forward inside the maze and you're trying to find your way to the end, okay? And so what happens is people take three steps and then they go, oh, no, I wasn't supposed to go left. I was supposed to go right. And then they go back and then they rewrite the first three steps and then they try two more. And then they're like, oh, wait, I wasn't supposed to take that right. I was supposed to go left. And then they go back to the beginning, right? And that's what makes the whole thing take so long. It's very difficult, okay? And so the biggest change that I've had in my own writing process has been you don't want to start exploring the maze until you understand where the end is, right? You don't want to go, you put me into a maze, give me my flashlight and move forward. What you want is you want to raise your hand and go, hey, can I please ask for a bird's eye view before I begin my adventure? They take you up in an elevator and you look down at the maze and you go, oh, here's the beginning and here's the end. And I kind of get a sense of where I'm going, right? Because the moment you know where the end is, all of a sudden now you have something very clear to work for, okay? And this is what's called creating an outline, all right? I just, it's, understand, it's important to understand what an outline actually is. And all an outline is, is saying, this is where you're starting and this is where you're ending. Now go on the journey. It's 10 times easier, right? So how do you create an outline? How do you create an outline for a Twitter thread, an ebook, uh, your magnum opus book, your course, your free email course, right? What, whatever it is that you're creating, how do you assemble an outline? Well, there's a handful of steps and we're going to walk through each one so that you can kind of internalize this framework so that every time you sit down to write, this is not what you should do first. If you start the writing process by writing, you're already lost. So just think about that. If you start the writing process by writing, you're already lost because you don't know where you're going. Okay. So first we got to figure out where we're going. So we're going to walk through the whole thing. Okay. So step one, you do not do the title last. The title is not a bow that you put at the top of your present. The title is literally a sketch from this is where we're starting to this is where we're going. And there's a very easy framework that I use all the time. Dickie uses this all the time. Every great copywriter uses this all the time. Authors unconsciously understand this is what they're doing, okay? And the framework is called this, how to outcome without the obstacle. That's the title. How to, what do you want without the, what's the hard part? Okay, so let's just, let's just fill it in. And if anyone, if you want to throw in some options in the chat to play with, let's do it. Okay, how to make tons of money without working 60 hours per week. All right, now we know where we're going, right? How to build a house without having to build it yourself. Now we know where we're going, right? How to write something viral without having to use BuzzFeed titles. 
It's very simple. How to outcome without obstacle. If you can't answer that question, you don't know what you're writing about. Okay, so, so all this whole idea of like, I need to go right to figure it out, maybe, but you need this in order to begin. What are you telling the person and why is it compelling, right? Here's the outcome without the hard part, all right? So just for the sake of making this easy, let's say Dickie and I want to write about something that has to do with writing, okay? So how to become a digital writer without spending 120K on an English degree, okay? So here's what we're going to, here's what we're going to explain to you, right? And because you're using this framework, the reader immediately goes, I understand what I'm going to get, right? I'm going to, I'm going to learn how to do this. And I understand why this is so compelling. I don't have to go spend this. Right. Okay. So now we know where we're going. All right. So that's step one. And I say this seriously, the majority of your time should be spent figuring this out first. Like sit there and go through a couple iterations until you have that clear outcome without obstacle, you know, and then once you land on one where you're like, okay, I think, I think this is the one, then you start building this out. All right. So already the interest, and we're going to do this at every at every step. When someone says, "I need to write a lot to know if it's a good book, or to know if it's a good email course, or to know if it's a good whatever," no, you don't. Real, real quick, drop in the chat. Is this is this a good book? Would you want to read this? You already know the answer. Whether it's yes or no, you already have an opinion, right? Because because it's clear. Right. Versus if this is just titled, you know, writing 101, we don't really have the pieces. People are like, ah, I don't really know if that's for me. Right. So you need to be able to answer this question. Okay. So, so we pick something. Now we go into step two. Step two is what are all the big ideas? Okay. So again, we're not writing, right? You are not going to write linearly. That's not how this gets assembled. How you get assembled is you go, what are all my main ideas, all right? And let's see, we can, we can make this a little group activity. If I'm gonna write about this, let's throw some ideas in the chat. What are all the different things, the big ideas? What are all the big things that I should probably cover in this, all right? There's a dozen, right? Building a daily writing habit. Yeah, okay, so here Coming we go, up with right? ideas. Building a daily writing habit, how to come up with ideas, how to write irresistible headlines, right? The most effective writing tools. Mindset. Developing right, yeah. a digital writer mindset. What's the digital writer mindset? Yeah, where to publish. How do I get more exposure on my writing? What are the best platforms to use, right? Yeah, how should- to Avoid distractions. Editing myself, how do I avoid distractions, right? Yeah, where should I not publish, okay? So these are all just big ideas, right? Now, here's the thing. This is the whole outline of your book. This is the whole outline of your course. This is the outline of your email course, right? Because these are all the big ideas. So before you've even started writing, you already know, hey, somewhere in here, I need to talk about these 10 things, right? Okay, so how do you do this visually in a way that makes sense? We go one by one, all right? Idea one, building a daily writing habit. Idea two, how to come up with ideas. Idea three, how to write headlines, okay? And you can do this visually if you want to, but you go, all right, so these are all my big ideas, all right? Now, what are each one of these? Each one's a chapter. Each one's an email in your sequence, 
Each one's a module in your course, right? Because you know, these are the 10 big ideas that I got I to gotta talk about, right? Okay, so now here's the question. You go through and you do this. Do you need to write the entire thing in order to know whether your book is valuable or not? Whether to know if your course is valuable or not? No, of course not. You just go to someone and give them this list and you go, hey, if I explain these 12 things to you, is this helpful? And they go, yes. And then you go, great. I now know that the thing that I'm writing is valuable. Or if they look at that list and they go, eh, actually, I only really care about two of those things. The other eight, I don't really need help with. What do you do? You go back and you build another list, right? So your job, this is, this is what took me like, 10 years to understand as a writer. Your job is not to sit down and write. Your job is to come up with what are the most valuable ideas? What are the most valuable things that I need to talk about for the reader? What are the problems that the reader needs solved? Right? And you can accomplish all of that without even writing a single page. All you have to do is just make the list. What are the 10 big ideas that you want to cover? What are the 12 big ideas? What are the eight big ideas, right? This works for a Twitter thread. When I sit down to write a Twitter thread, this is what I do. What are the 10 ideas I want to share in this Twitter thread, right? When I sit down to write a book, what do I do? What are the 10 big ideas that I want to share in this book, okay? So you just, you go down the list, okay? Then that's, so that's step two, all right? Step three then is we go, okay, well, now that I've got a bunch of these, what are all the sub ideas that go inside each one, right? And what are we actually doing when we do this? We are outlining each chapter. We're outlining each tweet. We're outlining each email. We're outlining each module, okay? So building a daily writing habit. Just on that, throw, throw it in the chat. What are all the things that someone needs to understand in terms of building a daily writing habit? What do, what do we need to tell them? Well, we need to tell them how to find and preserve your sacred hours, right? Yeah, the importance of writing anything, okay? Find the most productive place in your apartment or house. How about the importance of espresso, right? Don't go a single day without writing a word right? These are all the things that we need to tell the reader just about this one point, okay? So again, we haven't even started writing yet. All we're doing is just saying, what are the ideas? What are all the things that we need to say, all right? Then let's go to the next one. How do you come up with ideas? What are all the things that we need to say? Ideas are everywhere around you. How about like a note-taking idea capture system? How about taking inspiration from conversations? How about curation versus creation, right? These are all things that we need to cover in order for someone to understand, well, how do I come up with ideas, right? And so you just go down the list and you do this for each one of these sections. And by the time you're done, you're going to have an entire page where the whole thing is already, all, it's done. And you haven't written a single page linearly, right? Because you have all the answers, right? So now let's make this even more just so you can really see it. This is the, this is the chapter or this is the module or this is the email. And then underneath it, it's like section one, how to find your sacred hours, section two, the importance of publishing, right? And each one of these is its own section, okay? So just look at this visually. Section three, how to find the most productive place in your apartment, mm -hmm. right? And you just keep going down the list, right? Okay, so now you open this and people go, well, how do I organize all my ideas? Well, you already did. And now to write and assemble this thing, all you have to do is go, all right, so I got to color in, 
got a color inside the lines here, and then I got a color inside the lines here, and then I color inside the lines here, and you do that for all your subpoints all the way down, and then the chapter's done, the module's done, the email's done, whatever, right? So when it comes time to actually write, the writing, should you shouldn't be thinking about what to write about. You already know, right? You go, I'm writing about this thing broadly, and in this section, all I have to do is tell the reader how to find their sacred hours. That's it. And then in this section, all I have to do is tell the reader about the importance of publishing. And then in this section, all I have to do is tell the reader, here's how to find the most productive place in your apartment. And all of a sudden, as Dickie likes to say, right, it's all execution risk. You know what to do. You don't have to sit down and think. All you have to do is sit there and go, in this section for 500 words, all I have to do is explain this one thing. And if you do that over and over and over and over and over again, you've assembled something giant. That's it. You haven't done any writing up to this point. I think the big takeaway here is how little friction there is in writing something this long. When you look at the very first step that Cole took, which was make a bullet point list of the main ideas. You can do that yes. anywhere. The second an idea strikes, say idea, all the big main ideas that have to do with it. And you can do that on a walk. I recommend doing that on a walk. That's where I do almost all of my writing. And it's funny how Cole and I's methods kind of come together because this is exactly what I do. I don't always map it out by sitting down. Most of the time I have an idea when I'm on a walk and I go, idea, every bullet that I know I'm going to eventually fill in and boom, I have an outline. And I just tuck that away because then when I sit down on my computer, I'm not staring at a blank page. I'm starting always with this outline and I'm immediately diving into it. And I can add to that draft over time if I know that, hey, this is going to be a little bit longer of a thread or a piece, whatever I need. I can kind of fill in just like Cole did, but not always sitting at your computer, right? Recognizing that this is a multi-step process and you can write anywhere and it's not, oh, time to write, right? You're mm -hmm. writing all the time. You're always collecting ideas. You're always filling in the blanks. Like this. Yep, that's exactly right. And so the, I just saw the golden question in, in the chat, which is great. I'm glad, I'm glad that you, you asked it, uh, Jay, is, doesn't this require non-trivial fluency with your subject? So yes, why can I do this so quickly? Because I've already thought about all this stuff, right? So it's very easy to do this when you're dealing with something that you already know about, right? And so that's why a lot of what we talk about is, hey, like imposter syndrome only exists when you're trying to do something that you don't actually know anything about right? So like, just share what you know, two-year test, right? But here's the thing, is that this also works when you're trying to write something that you're learning or something that you want to learn. Okay, this was me in ghostwriting for years. How do I write about things that I don't know anything about, right? And so how do you do it? Well, we go back to this step, okay? First of all, we have to know what is the outcome and what is the obstacle? So even if you're learning about something, you should know I'm trying to learn how to get outcome without having to endure obstacle, right? You should at least know that. And then the second step is, well, what are all the main ideas? So as you learn and as you go on the journey yourself, you go, hey, this is a big idea. Like, I want to make sure that we cover this, right? Or if you're like as a ghostwriter, right? I would have to go out. And the first question I would ask is, what are all the big ideas? What are all the things that everyone's talking about with this? In 2016, I was ghostwriting for uh, a guy who was deep in crypto. I didn't know anything about crypto at the time. It was super early too, right? And how did I ghostwrite for something that I didn't know anything about? Well, the first thing I did is I went out and I was like, what are all the big ideas here, right? What is Bitcoin? What is blockchain technology? What does Ethereum actually do? What are all these, you know, zero knowledge proof 
algorithms? Like what, how, what are all the big ideas that people are talking about? Let me go educate myself on them. And then now you have something to work with. Okay, so a lot of times people ask like, how does the role of research play in your writing? Yeah, each one of these, I might, I might get to this step and go the most effective writing tools. I, I don't know. I need, I need to go spend five hours researching that. But I already know the puzzle piece that it's fitting into, right? And that's the whole idea is that you can understand the puzzle before you go and even figure out the content or go and do the research. The puzzle is the same, okay? So this, I, I can't stress this enough. I'm not lying in this first lead-in tweet. Like, this was the biggest problem. This is why my first book took so long. This is why it took me so long to create products is because I was trying to do it in a linear fashion. And so every time you sit down to write, your goal is to start with this. If you don't have a working title, outcome obstacle, and you don't have your list of what are your main ideas here, you don't have a project. You don't have a shell. You don't have a puzzle. You got to create the outline of the puzzle first, and then you just fill it in and your life will be 10 times easier. And Dickie can attest to it. This is how I produce stuff in like 38 minutes because you just create the frame and then you just color inside the lines. It's amazing. And I, it's simple and obvious almost that you should of course start this way, but it blows my mind that most people think that you just start writing and then you write all the way down the page and it, it isn't anything like, that. and it, what I love is it's fractal, meaning this is the same way you write a tweet as it is a 50,000 word ultimate guide blog post or book, right? Mm -hmm. You start and you expand. And if, as you think about the atomic writing process, you can be sharing your outline for things as a listicle or a checklist or a bunch of different things as you go where you're validating these ideas in real time, right? Mm -hmm. So if you took the main ideas here and it was like, I want to think, are these really the main ideas? I would turn this into a tweet and say, you know, the seven pillars of digital writing, blank, 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 blank. What else would you add? And I'd ask my audience, hey, what am I missing here? Right? So when you have this outline, it's just the beginning of your writing process. Then you take it to the feedback algorithm or feedback loops of Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever, and start to post small, you know, quick win kind of content. Once you're doing that consistently, then you know, hey, I have this follow-up question, or you turn each of these sections in the, into their own thread, right? Mm -hmm. It's the building blocks into a longer form piece where this turns into the ultimate guide to becoming a digital writer without spending 120 seconds. Yeah. And it might take you three months to really write, but once you have it, that asset works for you forever. And so replace digital writing with whatever you want to write the ultimate guide to, and you're going to assemble it this way. It's exactly how we assembled ours in, on mm -hmm. startwritingonline.com. So again, I think this is just worth soaking on how powerful this framework is if you take it seriously. Mm -hmm. And there's, I, I see two really good questions that I want to, I want to cover here in the chat. So one is Oscar, you asked, where do you place things like quotes, stories? Like, how do you think about organizing that? So let's kind of retrace. So we have our, what are our big ideas? So each one is a chapter, each one's a module, each one's a thing, right? An email. Inside of that, we have our, what are all of our sub ideas inside each one, right? And so when you break it out and you go, okay, here's chapter one, section one, which is just a sub idea, right? How you color inside the lines. This is from a different deep dive a couple of weeks ago, if you remember how you color inside the lines are, well, what are all the things that we can give someone? We can give them steps. We can give them examples, right? We can give them case studies. Yeah. We could give them quotes if we wanted to, right? We could give them personal stories, Right. So all of these things are over and over again. You can see how even if you just take these, right, and you just put those in each section, all you're asking yourself is like, okay, how to find your sacred hours? What do I need to put in here? Is this does the reader need some steps here? Yeah, maybe. You know, would it help to put a personal story? Hey, for years I struggled to find my sacred hours. Yeah, that might be valuable. Right. 
Should we throw a case study in here? Hey, and actually teaching ship 30, we noticed so many people struggle finding their sacred hours. Here's what happened when they did, right? So a lot of it is once you understand the puzzle pieces, assembling the puzzles is really easy. It's just a matter of taking the time and, and understanding like, what are the big ideas that you wanna talk about? And then just grouping things together, okay? So that's one side of it. And then uh, there's another one that's like the counterpoint. So yeah, Melina is what if you have too much content and you need to simplify, right? So this is where I spend the majority of my time here. What am I saying? All right, what are the big ideas? And if this list, if you're like, I want to write a book, but this list is, you know, we'll just for sake of visual representation, your list looks like this. You don't have a list. Okay, because what's happening here is you, you're not differentiating between big idea, important idea, and sub idea. Right, what, what are like, the and, and create constraints for yourself. Like go, I can only have 10 big ideas, right? I can only have eight big ideas. I can only have 12 big ideas, right? And then any other things that you come up with, they need to fit inside one of those buckets, right? But if you just list everything out like this, this is not, there's nothing coherent here because you don't know what's the big idea, what's the sub idea, right? And if you have too many big ideas, you're probably trying to do way too much. You haven't niched down enough. Right. So these are all just mental frameworks of how do you take something that you want to write about, get rid of the unnecessary stuff, put it into a frame, and then color inside the lines. If you can build that skill, you can write anything, anything. But most people either write linearly or when they build their outline, they do this and they just put a zillion ideas on the page with no rhyme or reason. No, you have to start with. Big idea, sub ideas, big idea, sub ideas, big idea, sub ideas. And if you do that, then each, right? A book isn't a book. A book is 12 blog posts. Reframe, right? A book is not a book. A book is 12 blog posts. So just make each thing its own standalone piece. And if you organize it, it's very easy. Questions, hmm. anything? I, this, I use this framework every single day. So I thought it would be very helpful to kind of walk through it and share. What are the variants to the framework, right? So I think my head jumps right away. It's not without, you just are changing the obstacle. So not without obstacle, or, but, or, but in X amount of time, or even if you think blank. Right. Mm -hmm. It could be a mental obstacle. It could be a time based obstacle. It could be a mindset obstacle. It could be um, a resources, a aid, right? How to start a business, even if you're only 20 or XYZ, right? So we could actually brainstorm what all the different obstacles are, right? And how you can solve a problem other than just without, uh, you know, the way cold frame. Mm -hmm. But even still, like, there's there's variations on everything, but this is this is the easiest one, and this is the one that is it. You don't have to be fancy about it, you know. It's just understanding that a story requires a conflict, right? A story requires a beginning and an end. So here, what is that? It's outcome and obstacle, you know. So however you get to beginning and end, right? You start here, you end up here. However you get there is fine, but the easiest way of thinking about it is outcome and obstacle. See, what you, so what about the first line opener? What gets fun is once you're coloring in the lines, you have your own frameworks for doing that coloring in the line, right? very first sentence, I need some kind of credibility or some kind of moment in time, right? Or we talk about our six one sentence openers. You just kind of, you have, I've watched Cole do this as he assembles his writing and it's okay, I'm coloring in the lines here. Bang, how am I going to open this? How am I going to add texture? How am I going to format? Like you have this writing toolkit from the very beginning that once you start diving in, you're just digging in and saying, okay, now 
I need a piece of credibility. How do I have credibility on this, right? On the blank, keep going. This is why we say you should not sit down and create something massive, a book, an ebook, an ultimate guide, a course, whatever. If you have not first done a Twitter thread that at least shares your big ideas or even an individual tweet that's like, these are the five biggest ideas that this category of person would be thinking about. These are the five biggest problems that I want to solve, right? It's so easy to validate. So why would you go spend, in my case, four years writing a book where you have no idea if any of the things you're talking about are the right problems, right? And so it's it's hard. And Melina, I see your, your comment in the chat. It's like, what if you don't want to go <laughs> get the feedback? Well, then don't be surprised with the result, right? If you don't want to take the time to, to go through the steps and really understand if you're solving the right problems, then don't be surprised if you put something out into the world and the world goes, that wasn't the right problem. I'm not giving you my attention, right? So if you break it down into something that's very actionable, you should be able to test each one of these things as you go along. You know, There's no reason why you can't write a Twitter thread in the next 30 minutes that validates are these the 10 biggest problems? If they are, expand that Twitter thread and do an ultimate guide. Expand that ultimate guide into a book, right? It's so easy now because we have technology. And yes, uh, the same works for the title. If no one knows this story, um, you can do this in a bunch of different ways. But when Tim Ferriss was coming up with the, head, the title for the four-hour work week, it originally was not supposed to be titled that. He had a different title idea, but he wanted to validate it. So he ran a bunch of Google ad campaigns with like 20 different title ideas. And he saw which ones got the most clicks. And the one that got the most clicks was four hour work week. That was his title. Right. I have a funny, I have a funny addition to that because I'm just a Tim Ferriss geek. So four hour work week was the second most popular. The first most popular was drug dealing for fun and profit. And <laughs> that one uh, clearly didn't make the list, but it was funny that that was number one. And then four hour work week was number two. He's like, I'm not going to go with drug dealing for fun and profit. I, I think I'm getting that story right, but I've heard him say before. Um, but that made me laugh when I first heard it. Cause it's like, don't assume run a test and it worked. Yeah. That's awesome. I actually didn't know that. That's cool. Um, but yeah, that's, and, and we talk about this with lean writing all the time. Why, why did uh, Mark Manson title his book, the subtle art of not giving a fuck? because the name of his most popular blog post was The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. Why did Malcolm Gladwell title his book The Tipping Point? Because his most popular article was called The Tipping Point, right? We talk about these things over and over again because they, they work, they matter, they're real. So take your ideas. And if you're like, I want to go and spend the next three years of my life building the most legendary course the world's ever seen, well, then you better have some data that says each one of these modules is solving the problem that people have. And if you're, and if you've got that ego investment being like, well, I think this is right, but you haven't shared it. You haven't gotten any feedback. You have no data. You haven't talked to anybody. Then do not be surprised when you put your course or your book or whatever out into the world and nobody pays attention because you skipped the most important step, right? So that's why this, this is one of those things where like, it takes a little bit of reorienting, but if you internalize this, your speed and your quality of creation goes up 10 X because you know exactly who you're creating for and you know how to assemble the frame in record time, record time. Hmm. I need to soak in this. I need to soak on this framework. Feel? It's awesome. Yeah. Drop in the chat. Is this helpful? You, what's your big takeaway here? What are you putting into practice right away? Crystallize it. If you're watching this on YouTube, throw a comment. What's the biggest thing you're taking away here? What are you going to go outline? Uh, what's the golden nugget? Because sometimes it's easy to watch these, sit, feel like you're learning. What are you going to put into practice immediately? If, if Bearcat, that's a great question. What does it mean if you can't elaborate on an idea or a sub idea? It means that it wasn't as valuable as you thought. 
right? If you put an idea down and then you're like, oh, wait, there's really nothing here. Don't keep the idea, right? Kick it to the curb. It's that's your big ideas you should look at and be like, wow, I could write about this for years, right? So that's, that's the whole point is you're differentiating between what's really there and what's not. 